thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaos. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc. that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Horror on the Orient Express, where we are going to have a sleepover. But first, at the top of the show, what I'd like to do is thank all of our listeners and all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for being a part of our stories. If you would like to join the Patreon, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Old Ways Podcast. And you can also have a hand in what might become an amazing an epic story. Uh, but for now, let's do introductions. So if you would, to my right. Hello, this is Mike, and I'm playing James Robert Fraser. And tonight, there's been a jailbreak. It's very, very true. Uh, to Mr. Fraser's right. Hi, I'm Rena, and I play Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy, and uh, I'm just glad I don't have to get my own breakfast again. Very true. At the end of the table. Hi, this is Giles, and I'm playing Simon Griffith, and I blew something up. Ooh, fantastic. I did enjoy that. Uh, to Mr. Griffith's right. Hi, this is Miranda, and I play Maggie Bellinger, and this stay at Anton's is at least slightly more pleasant, hopefully, than the, my last stay here. Time will tell. Uh, and last, but certainly not least. I'm Martin, and I'm playing Richard Courtney, and I think Richard's been looking around Anton's house, just, just checking the place out, making sure there's, I don't know, somewhere to wash trousers, that sort of thing. A, a reasonable endeavor. So we, we raise the curtain tonight on an evening scene, late night scene at Anton's home, far off from the city center, a couple miles away. The investigators have secreted themselves inside Anton's house because they've gone ahead and um, extricated their friend. Their important key portion of their investigator crew, one James Robert Fraser, he is no longer in an Italian prison. And I'm certain that he's very glad. The home itself is, with the five of you, cozy. I think that's probably the best way to say it. So, the house itself that Anton secured is mostly a farmhouse. Minus the fact that there's no actually farming that gets done on the property anymore. There are two bedrooms. And then a kitchen. And a large we'll say living room space where there are multiple couches. Uh, both Richard and Maggie have some experience on these couches having to uh, had rested up earlier from their grievous wounds at the, uh, from the caves nearby. But that said, there are only two bedrooms. Uh, and so it's going to be up to the investigators how they want to sort out the sleeping situation. Both beds are reasonably comfortable, although I think it's important to point out that they are country beds. So these are not sort of properly maintained uh, hotel beds as you would be used to. Are they single beds? Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, and in fact, Miss Ballinger will take one bed and uh, her leadership will take the other. There's no discussion to be had on the matter. All right. So you gents will have to uh, fend for yourself there in the living room. Uh, or, or make some way of it. Perhaps uh, the dining room table again uh, prefer you, uh, Mr. Griffith. I'd rather not sleep on the table again, if you don't mind. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the whole place, honestly, Simon just gives you the willies, the whole place. Because you remember the table shaking and the weird chanting and the smell that's gone, but still kind of sort of in the air. It's really hard to get comfortable in here. You're, you're, you're sort of waiting for Anton to come back in. It's He's gone and so is the dog. And you get a little itchy when you're sitting on this couch. You feel along on your forearms. You can feel the stuff he painted on your arms again. It's unsettling. 
Is there a wooden chair that Simon can sleep in? Oh, there's a rocking chair. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll take it if no one else has. You all make do as best you can in a house meant for a couple of people. But, you know, it's it's reasonable. I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> you put the kettle on. Uh, you stoke the fire back up. Get the room a little warmer. Maybe make yourself some hot tea to help soothe this rather Bora-infused evening. Uh, the wind has not stopped howling this evening. And as a farmhouse, the walls here are not necessarily completely uh, conditioned for it. I think um, if, there, if there's um, many food in the larder, vegetables, um, yeah. Mr. Fraser will make uh, a bit of a stew for everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then leave um, some coins for, uh, for Anton to um, thank him for the provision. Well, we all know that Anton is, is likely enjoying his recent flush financial stability from uh, having dealt with uh, Professor Courtney's uh, wounds. And so perhaps he's off enjoying himself in another city with uh, bags of cash he now has. We, uh, we will keep that in mind moving forward, Professor, as you likely have changed uh, the local economy. But that's okay. For the, for the most part, the rest of you are dealing with the physical repercussions of running around in the middle of the night and the adrenaline wearing off and that soreness that your body gets after a long period of physical labor. And that is no more present in any one of you than it would be in you, Lady Elizabeth. The bed here you believe will do but you are probably in the back of your mind concerned about what the morning will look like just from a, a physical pain management perspective. Might have to ask Paul for some pick me up. Ah, uh, yes. You're certain that he's probably going to be going to be willing to do so, if not happy to do so. Paul seems to be committed to making sure you have what you need. The night wears a little bit on and Rest comes for each one of you in its own way. Miss Bellinger, you have no problem falling asleep in this bed. You are probably out like a light within, I don't know, 10 minutes of arrival. The day's exertion, all of the energy spent, the excitement of breaking a friend out of prison. It's been a really full day. And uh, and you're happy to have a bed to lay down in. The slightly familiar one, even. Right. Can't be that. <laughs> The wind howls a bit more throughout the evening as you all sleep. I'd like to ask our the gentleman sleeping in the living room. Is anyone purposefully staying up? I think um, that um, Mr. Fraser will have a, a look at Simon's uh, condition. And if he is well enough, suggest that they take it in shifts to stay up. But uh, if he still looks like he's badly battered and needs rest... He won't even suggest it. You know, he'll just uh, volunteer to stay awake. Okay. So I suppose give me a percentage as far as where you're at hit point wise, Mr. Griffith. Actually, you should be you should be fine. I would imagine mostly. I'm about two thirds right now. Yeah. Yeah. You you you're probably convinced, Mr. Fraser, that he could use some rest. You <laughs> you have a good read of his physical acumen, and you know that he's strong as an ox and all this, but. Oh, it wouldn't be a bad idea for him to get some rest. Yes, and uh, sleeping on a rocking chair is uh, not necessarily the, the the most comfortable and the most restful. So I'll make sure the fire is kept stoked and uh, uh, keep an eye out as well. You get some rest, Simon, and uh, and yourself, Professor. No, I was just going to say he doesn't trust um, Richard to be a, a, an effective <laughs> guard <laughs> through the night. He's not be even going to suggest. <laughs> One thing Simon will do, since the trunks are here, mm -hmm. he's going to go ahead and open it up and take out the uh, 30-06 and assemble it. Sure. You get it ready. And then he can just lean it by the wall near the chair or so, or on the floor, whichever's safe. Probably leaning it up against the wall by the chair would be reasonable enough. Yeah, no bullet in the chamber, so it's not like it's going to go off or anything. But And then I'll just keep a couple rounds in his pocket so if he grabs it he can just thumb a cartridge in. All right, you Barney five some bullets and head to bed. 
pretty much. Before Simon goes to bed, I, was, I take it, Simon, you you didn't have a, a chance to retrieve my uh, my handgun from the uh, from the church. Not yet, Jim. We were kind of under a time constraint getting the prison. Understood. Understood. Well, if if circumstances allow, then perhaps we'll be able to do so at some stage before we leave. We still have a lot of work to do here. Sure we can. It might even be better if Professor and Miss Maggie do it, because I doubt that they will draw much attention. Well, I just uh, I just worry that somebody might find it in the meantime. I didn't have an awful lot of chance to secrete it. Time was short. Understood. Rest comes for, again, the group at large, minus you, James, who stay up with the howling boral wind. And every so often, you begin to hear little trinkets or knickknacks on the shelves that Anton keeps rattle a little. In line with the wind, there's a smell that comes in the living room, not just from the stew, but all of Anton's assorted herbs or herbs, depending upon your location, that rest in the kitchen, that sit dry. And these almost spiced winds begin to come through. It's very soothing. And unfortunately, it's likely a little too soothing for you. And so I'm going to have you make a con roll for me. Mr. Fraser is well used to sitting up all night, given the uh, the heady aroma of these peculiar, almost um, three-leafed plants that are drying in bunches by the fire. (laughs) Perhaps. You keep the light off as well. Maybe there's a little glow from the fire, but um, definitely wants to keep it dark in the house so that he can watch outside, watch and listen. Um, Yep, that is a normal success, 28 under... Well, sorry, it's a hard success, 28 under 85 for his con roll. Wonderful. You push through. You've um, <laughs> you smelled scents like this before. You know how they uh, tend to get at your perceptions, and you just resolve yourself to continue doing the job that you were meant to do. Lady Elizabeth. Yes? You are resting comfortably in the next room. It has been, we'll say at this point, an hour or so since you first uh, laid down for rest. It, it takes you a little while to get comfortable here. It's not the right bed, and trying to make it into the right bed has proved less than useful. But you have finally gotten into this resting position, um, and it's put you on your side, which sort of puts your frame of view at one of the windows of the bedroom. And as you're resting and just barely dozing, you begin to see... Just the lightest of frost work its way up from the bottom of the windowsill onto the panes of glass here. And it inches up very slowly. And then you get this visual of that frost blossom out into a big profile. And you see a face in that frost. And it's a rather curious one. It's not a face you've seen before, readily, recently, anyway. Um, It's a man with a rather pointed beard, curly hair, a somewhat playful grin, and what looked like a very interesting set of darting eyes. He's, the profile picture is not looking at you or in your direction. It's sort of looking into the corner of the room. It's looking away from you. Hmm. I'm going gonna, gonna, to, I imagine I think I'm probably half asleep at this point. Certainly. And so I'm not quite sure if I'm actually seeing this, but I'm just going to look in the corner he's looking towards. Mm-hmm. You look in the corner that he's looking towards and you see nothing. And then you do. You see a a figure made of strands of fog. A ghostly figure. Draped in some very strange clothing. Only clothed from the waist down. And 
completely androgynous face and body begin to gyrate, move about the space back and forth as if it's dancing to a completely and totally different tune you cannot hear. You see a little rattle from some of the um, picture frames on the wall in here. You begin to feel a very light vibration from the bed you're in. And you watch the figure for at least a moment until you act dance at the foot of your bed. Very, well, one might say provocatively. That's very strange. So does the figure just stay there? It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, get, any, it doesn't get any closer to you. It does not approach beyond the foot of the bed. It moves as, as it's sort of ghostly clothing moves around it. You see uh, it's crowned with vines around its forehead and uh, the back of its head. You see it has a staff now in its hand, some sort of pine cone, maybe top staff. It, it sheds other figures. So from the, the, the core of itself, other ghostly shapes appear out of it. And these are just, well, <laughs> naked feminine forms that seem to cavort with it. They, they're smaller. They're um, almost miniaturized versions of what you're seeing. Not children, but as if they are simply very short adults, but they dance with it. And you can, you, you can begin to hear their feet now begin to make sound as they hit the floor. Does this remind me of anything that I've read before or that I've seen? Um, you can make me a cult roll. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. And Considering uh, it's one of my things. Yeah, okay, and uh, I'll, I'll have the uh, Hand of Fate put you at advantage for that as well. Ooh, okay. Well, Hand of Fate took me from a regular success, 41, to a hard success, 31, under 67. Oh, yeah, this is unbelievably yet easily recognizable as Dionysus. Fascinating. Michael, is there... Um the possibility that Mr. Fraser would hear this dancing? Certainly possible, sir, if you'd like to make me a hard listen roll. Uh, you're, the reason why it's hard uh, to explain is that the Bora wind is howling right now. And so some of the things you might not, um, especially with the rattling going on already in, in the oh, yes, main I, room. I wasn't even sure if it was something that was even hearable by anyone other than the person meant to hear it. It's possible. Yeah. Okay, so my listen is 60. It's not bad. But that is a 42, so that is not a hard success. So they continue at the foot of your bed to cavort. And without any sort of warning, these, um, you would know them as main ads, these other wild they call them wild females that's what they would be referred to as only because they're not quote, being being controlled by anyone uh, they begin to cavort with dionysus and their form and it begins to get in this century rather explicit so since i've recognized who the figures are it doesn't worry me too much it's not you know something super creepy it's just a, it's it's mythology. It's fine. So I think I'm going to get out of bed and get a little bit closer. It's fascinating. You get out of bed, and as soon as your feet touch the floor, the dancers come to a very slow pause. And the main figure, in all of their glory, <laughs> ghostly glory... They extend a hand to you, at least towards you a bit, and they take one very long, sweeping step towards you. You can see that their body is, again, very, very lightly draped with any sort of clothing. And their form is neither masculine nor feminine. 
it seems to, as it reaches toward you, seems to shift between several genders. Well, if they're reaching out to me, it would be rude not to take their hand. Certainly. You take their hand. Give me a power roll. Okay. 45 under 70, regular success. Okay. Um, You begin dance with this figure. Actually, with many of them. You get moved between part dancing partners. We'll just say that. And as you do so, each one of the Maynards accepts you as a, a loving partner in a dance. It is not, I guess I would just say to, to you, it, it is not, it's not at all perverse what they do with you during these dances. Although it is probably not something that you would see at one of your father's um, social calls. We'll just put it that way. Um, But you begin to have a very enjoyable time. Um, And at this point, no listen roll is necessary. Um, So above the wind, Mr. Fraser, you begin to hear footsteps coming from one of the bedrooms and you almost hear sort of a, it's a very strange pattern. You can't pick it out at first. Someone's moving by pattern. I think um, he will get up, cautiously move uh, across to the door, but very quickly, and tap gently tap on the door. Your ladyship, are you all right? No. Oh, yes, quite fine, Mr. Fraser. I heard movement. And I think you actually hear you actually hear a laugh, like a an actual laugh, not just a polite social kind of thing. So when you hear this laugh, Mr. Fraser, it sounds echoey and distant. Can I get you anything, your ladyship? Uh, are, you, are you sure you're all right in there? Quite fine, Mr. Fraser, quite fine. I don't think I need anything right now. You know, forgive me, your ladyship, but, but you, you sound a, a, a little unlike yourself. I think you just hear her laughing again. Might I come in? Mm, I'm not quite sure how to respond to that out of character. I mean, you're not going to... You won't get it. I would just say that your current dancing partners, all four or five of them or whatever are much more interested in having mm, your attention. Mm -hmm. And so it's very much likely that um, while this conversation is going on, they're continuing to try to pull you Mm -hmm. back and forth through the room, through their hands, through their bodies. So you might get passed between Dionysus and one of the, the main ads, but you get passed through several of their forms and you can feel them when they pass through you. I don't think that will be necessary, Mr. Fraser. And you just hear the laughing again and then she doesn't say anything else. I think, uh, your your ladyship, uh, I suppose if, if if you're sure, uh, Mr. Fraser is quite concerned by, uh, by this, uh, hitherto, um, uh, unseen side, um, of her ladyship, he's never seen her Still quite unseen. So... Well, yes, indeed, yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the one of the difficult things for you, um, obviously, maybe not so much obviously, James, is that it's the tone of her voice. It's when she says she doesn't need anything. It's it's not a tone you've really heard before. That's a that's very strange. That's a strange kind of e- echoey tone as well, isn't isn't there? Yes. I think um, Mr. Fraser is going to go to the uh, the other room. Am I, am I right in thinking there's two separate beds and two separate mm-hmm. bedrooms yep. here? He's going to go to the other room, and uh, if there's no similar sounds of clomping about coming from within it, he's he's going to um, knock on the door first gently, but with possibly increasing rapidity and fervor <laughs> if he doesn't get an answer. Uh, and he's going to knock a little bit louder. Miss, Miss Bellinger, Miss Bellinger, are you awake? I am now, Mr. Fraser. Is it morning already? Um, uh, no, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about uh, her ladyship. Um, 
something's something's not right. I, I wonder, would you would you mind would would you mind awfully um, checking on her? Uh, she has she, she's she's told me she's fine, but I, I I'm, I'm I'm I am concerned. I, I, there's, there's there's something strange going on. It's one one sec, Fraser, and I'll. She's laughing, Miss Bellinger. Oh dear, <laughs> something is wrong. So, while this is going on, the spirits these apparitions. Haints, as Mr. Griffith might call them, they begin to close in around you in a very sensual way, Lady Elizabeth. There are four, five pairs of hands on you now, and your body begins to to begin to get the exhilaration of this tempo, this dance movement that's been going on. And they're trying to draw you somewhere you don't know where that is i think lady kind of discovered something about herself when she was with iliana in the hotel all those nights ago and so she's just learning to let go and so she's just going to give into it and it makes her think of the princess you think about your princess and you give into it and i would just say miss bellinger and Mr. Fraser, the things that you begin to hear from the other side of Lady Elizabeth's door are definitely her having a good time. Mr. Fraser, I don't, I'm not sure if we should interrupt that. It's not, it's, there's something, Miss Ballinger, you, you, surely, surely you can hear there's something. Doesn't it sounds perfectly consensual to me? Between who, though? There's nobody else here but us. Who's in there with her? Mr. Fraser, sometimes when a person is lonely or bored or just has some extra time on their hands... Miss Bellinger, I understand what you're saying, and I don't think humour is appropriate at this particular juncture. <laughs> I will I'll knock on Lady Elizabeth's door. The ghosts evaporate. As, as quickly as they were there, as, as amazing as the experience was, Lady Elizabeth, you find yourself in whatever night clothes she would normally be dressed in, um, standing in the middle of the room, um, having just had an amazing dance encounter with several spirits, and there is a, a knock which seems to have shattered that situation. And you are at a loss for breath. Grab onto the edge of the bed, I think, try and catch my breath. And just, yes. Yes, Lady Elizabeth, it's me, Maggie, uh, Mr. Fraser got me to come check on you. Uh, we thought maybe you were having a dream or uh, something that you needed to be roused from. Uh, I assure you, I need no rousing at this moment. Thank you very much. Yes, you sound fine. Are you okay? Is there uh, someone in there with you? No. Well, there you have it, Mr. Fraser. Everything's fine. You, 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 you heard that as well as I did. She was clearly not alone there. It certainly sounds alone now. If you would, would like, I can see if she would let me in to, to check on her. I mean, Miss Ballinger, I'm... Uh... Lady Elizabeth, uh, Mr. Fraser would feel better if we came in to check on you. Might we come in? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. I, 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 I think it's best if, if, if you go in on your own. Uh, Lady Elizabeth, might I come in then? I grab my dressing gown from the chair next to the bed. If you must. I'll enter. So I'm on the, sitting on the edge of the bed with my dressing gown wrapped around me, looking slightly flushed and definitely a bit, uh, bit of a glow. Mr. Fraser, there's no one in here. I told you. How, how can that be? I mean, I, I clearly hear her voices and... and, and footsteps around. It sounded like you were, I don't know, jumping up and down or, or dancing or something. This is not our first time in Anton's house. This is a strange place, but safe. It's a very interesting house indeed. Uh, are, are you sure you don't need some sleep, Mr. Fraser? Oh, perhaps. Perhaps I, 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 I... But with everything that's been going on, Your Ladyship, I was, uh, I was concerned uh, that I I I I'm, I don't know. Perhaps I need a little sit down and a cup of tea. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Fraser, but I can assure you, everything 
is quite fine. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear it, Your Ladyship. I, I, I'll, I apologise for, for waking you, Miss Ballinger. I, I'll, I'll let you get away back to bed again. Mr. Fraser, make me a spot hidden roll. Of course. That is a hard success, 30 under 86. Fantastic. Just as you're about to leave the room, because clearly something may have happened, but there's no evidence of everything happening, you are ready to get back to bed. And as you turn, you just out of the gaze of your eye, you see the far window on the bedroom has been covered in frost. And in that frost, you see a face. You see the face of, uh, well, we'll say just a, uh, an angular featured man, uh, sort of a pointy beard, um, curly hair, maybe. And then uh, he wears a, a wreath of, of vines around his head. It's very classical, but there is no way that Frost does that to a window. Does this appear to be on the outside or the inside? Can I tell? Um, you'd have to probably get closer, at least to visually inspect it too. Your ladyship, what, what is that on your window there? Is that, did, is that something that you did? Is that there when we arrived? Uh, a f- very unusual pattern of the frost. Uh, looks like a face. Ah, uh, yes, I noticed it when I went to bed. I'm sure it's nothing. But there's no frost on any of the other rooms in the house. Well, you're free to inspect it if you'd like to, Mr. Fraser. Although this is a very strange house, it's probably just a ghost on the window. Um, I don't really know what that'll achieve, to be honest. Uh, doesn't look quite natural to me, but you, you would know best, I suppose. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll leave you to it. Uh, I'll, I'll way back to the fire. He's going to kind of head back a little bit with his tail between his legs and <laughs> very, very confused about what the hell was going on here tonight. From one lady with secrets to another lady with secrets, I will wink at Lady Elizabeth as I leave. You get a very blank polite face in response. I can see that face. I can imagine it now in my mind's eye. So the group, eventually the three of you get back to doing what you were doing. either staying up, cooking stew, um, sleeping in your case, Miss Bellinger. And we'll just say visiting some ghosts in your case, Lady Elizabeth. Oh, they come back. Wonderful. Mm, No, 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 no. (laughs) You get back to bed. The one thing you notice before you go to sleep is near the nightstand here, you'd kept out a few books to help you get through the process of falling asleep. Because for you, it isn't just laying down and immediately going to sleep. Your body doesn't let you do that. There's too many ways it needs to be comfortable and set given the pain management you have to do. Winkleman's diary is amongst those books only because it's top of mind. And you can tell on the top of that leather at cover, there is a thick sheen of frost. Oh, if I notice that, that's going to banish sleep for the moment. And the gods know that you're full of energy now. Oh, yes. You dive back into the journal. One of the things that was interesting with the old Greek translation is there's a lot of things in there that Winkleman pointed to. And what I would like you to do is give me a hard library use roll. Oh, my library use is 80, so I need a 40. 18. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. So you spend about an hour or so reading the the book again, from what you can from the translation. And one of the margin notes that is made in here seems to point to a reference to a tale he was told about Bacchus and you knowing your own mythology know that Bacchus and Dionysus are Roman versus Greek. So there's a connection there and you can tell even on this page, the one that the footnote is on, it's a little damp from frost 
And there's a little story here in the margin about how he had had a dream that he was visited by, he calls it a, a Roman god, and that they'd had the most interesting experience. He doesn't go into it any further than that. But he says that since that day, he would he has decided that he would look for a living quarters in Trieste and something that might remind him of that experience. Tiniest footnote, but you pick it up. I will make a note of that to discuss with the others in the morning. Okay. Possibilities. You stay up and read a little bit longer. Several hours pass until the morning arrives. Each one of you needs to make a power roll now uh, for another night spent in Trieste. Does the fact that I've not slept tonight make any difference to this? Do I need to make a hard power roll? After yeah, we'll, we'll say it's hard for you. Oh, it is. I'm going to spend three luck to pass that if That's, I can. Yes, you can. Okay. That's a success for Maggie. Wonderful. Richard passes with a 67 and a 80. Good. James has a 22 under 55, so he's got his hard success. Good job. And that's a 12 under 65 for Simon. Okay. So the group passes with flying colors. Um, none of you feel the, we'll just say the laboring effects of another night spent in Trieste. You do not feel wiped out. You don't feel like something has been gnawing at, at your inner energy. In fact, all of you, especially you, Lady Elizabeth, are filled with all sorts of wonderful energy this morning. The one thing the larder does afford you is a full breakfast. It seems Anton kept a fair amount of local trade up with some of the farmers here. So there are available eggs and meats, uh, including bacon, and uh, also uh, some some definite pieces that you could make into uh, sandwiches if you wanted to travel. The, qu the question will be is, after breakfast, where does the group feel like it, the aim of its day is, given everything that happened yesterday and last night? Well, uh, I suppose um, it would be prudent to discuss and decide exactly what our aims and objectives are here. Um, I was thinking about that diary and Winkleman's, uh, his mission, his task that he'd set himself, some... Uh, some kind of, um, well, I don't know what it was, uh, some kind of creatures, some things, as he described it, and, and that uh, he had, uh, had uh, asked him for this amulet, which he'd hidden in order to prevent that fellow um, Marchetti. Is that right? Have I got that one right? Uh, Arcan Arcangeli um, from, uh, from Stealing. And the question that phrases itself in my mind is, where, where would he hide that? I mean, I'm assuming that he didn't bring it to the caves, which um, uh, I've, uh, I've noticed are, are in a, a place um, that is only around 20 or so miles away from here. It doesn't seem to be that he brought the, the actual amulet to the caves, un unless there is further entries in the, in the diary to that effect. This only goes up to... Up to June, I believe. Is that right, your ladyship? Yes, uh, more or less. But uh, I think, based on some things that I've read, he had other lodgings in town. He was looking mm. for specific experiences. Do we know what year this diary is? Is it the same uh, as the year of his death? I, I'm not sure why... Why we're tracing these trinkets? Surely, I mean, we're kind of on the run, really. I mean, um, we've broken somebody out of jail. I'm quite sure they're going to be after you. And uh, surely we should just get whatever part of the simulacrum it is that we're we're looking for and, and, and get out. I, I don't know why we're bothering with these trinkets. And Dr. Smith, in, in, in his letter, has clearly pointed us towards Winkleman with regards to this piece of the simulacrum, I can't help but think there must be some connection which we don't have enough information to, to, to make at the moment, but... No, I agree. Surely the more we can find out about Winkleman and, and what he was doing and what he was involved in, surely that will lead us 
more clearly towards the, the part of the simulacrum. But those caves, I, I don't relish going back there again, not after... Oh, no, these are different caves, I think. These, these, are, these are a lot further away. These are right, the caves right. we visited are only a few. Uh, they're only here. They're just round the corner here, just a, a couple of miles from. Yes, we sh- we should definitely steer clear of those. I'm 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 not minded to go back there again. Well, it seems to be from his diary that he was planning to meet whatever it was, whoever it was he was supposed to give the amulet to in these caves. Perhaps this is where they made their home. Whether or not he did so, it doesn't say. And I'm wondering if this is the same diary, the same is, is if this is the same year as the other information that we have. We know he died in uh, September. Michael, is there anything in the diary to, to indicate what year it is? Actually, there isn't. So the one thing that's remiss about the diary is a direct note on when the diary started. You do know this, though. So you do know that... The diary was produced just a few years before he died. And that is evident, too, because they have dates just uh, just a year or two before the last entry. So does that give us the impression, then, that, that, that the 7th of June that's mentioned in the diary here, when he's, um, he's being harassed by this fellow, uh, Arcangeli, is not the same year he died? So it's, I say, a few years beforehand. It's a few years beforehand. Right, okay. Just want to check. When did he die? 1768 he died. I'm just trying to remember what the circumstances of his death were. Was it Archangeli that was um, accused of his murder and was broken on the wheel? At the time? Yes. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Mm, and especially given how important... Winkleman ended up being, especially to Trieste, you can only imagine the um, swiftness that they uh, met his accused, or who they believe killed him. So he died, he was murdered, 1768, and this fellow Arcangeli was accused of his murder and broken on the wheel. But he seems to have been travelling around with this, this this man for years beforehand, if, if, if this diary is not the same year that he died. And how long was he in? How long was he in Trieste for? Because this this diary, he arrives in Trieste, which he's calling Turgeste, on the 1st of June. Well, he certainly went looking for some sort of living accommodations, as if he intended to stay quite a while. Hmm. He must have put up with this man's harassment for a very long time. I believe Miss Bellinger and Lady Elizabeth were told when they met with the Termona family that one of the reasons why Winkleman was so important to the city is because he had, in effect, moved his life here. Hmm. That's why he's so revered in this city. And he made a, a pretty indelible impression on the people here. And that's why they venerate him so. So he would have had to have lived here, you would imagine, for at least a few years to generate that sort of uh, reputation. Absolutely. Do you think Arcangeli was trying to get hold of the amulet all that time? Or did he manage to actually fulfill his, his obligation or whatever it was and bring the amulet to uh, whoever it was, whatever it was. I, I don't know. It's, he calls them beasts and things. I uh, can't imagine what he means by that. I can't help but think that if years have passed between these these entries and his actual death, he, he must have he must have brought the amulet there. I don't know. I just... Um, it, it, it looks like trouble if you ask me. Well, what do you suggest then, Professor Courtney? What... what um, <sighs> What uh, direction shall we go in in order to uh, search out the piece of the simulacrum that is here? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, it's, it's a puzzle. Well, it, it is a puzzle, yes. But we need to find a solution to the puzzle. Um, you're you're a, a, a learned man, sir. You, you are a mathematician. Surely you can puzzle it out. Surely you can work out the, uh, the equation, the formula for uh, discerning yes. what from from the facts we've got use your use your analytical powers to their uh, to their best effect well 
perhaps. I mean, I, I have this theory that um, everywhere where we encounter one of these parts of the simulacrum, there's uh, uh, an abundance of threads and activity in, uh, that I can see. And uh, uh, perhaps if I was able to focus again, I can, yes, perhaps work out roughly where this is. I like smoke from a fire. Uh, where, where there's um, a fire, there's a, an abundance of smoke. And, and even though you can't see exactly where the flames are, you can, from a distance, you can, you can see where the, uh, the smoke is emanating from and uh, you, you can home in on a location. Perhaps we can do the same with the device and the piece of the simulacrum. I mean, are you sure you want to use that thing again? And look at yourself, man. It's, it, you're, you're changing. And I'm not, I'm not overly sure that it's for the better. Uh, I have a feeling this might resolve itself after we've destroyed this horrendous thing. They must be connected. It cannot be a coincidence. And if time is of the essence for us to 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 leave, then it, it we uh, we must take any shortcut that we uh, believe may work. And this seems like it, it might be the fastest route. Uh, fastest, but certainly not the least dangerous. Well, I'm sure if anything happens, um, you, you're all here to uh, uh, to assist. A thought has just occurred to me. The uh, murder of the French soldier by... Uh, this was the, the fellow Marchetti, I think. He was uh, sent by his master, as it's described, to uh, collect a, a valuable piece from the soldier. Now, my assumption is that this is the piece of the simulacrum. I wonder, I wonder if the reason that Dr. Smith pointed you in the direction of Winkleman was because Winkleman was this man Marchetti's master. Is that possible? Or am I putting two and two together and making five? I don't know. I mean, we've... Yes, I think that's, that's perfectly sensible. So I'll ask then... In what direction will the investigators be going? Listening to all y'all, uh, who's going to go pick up uh, uh, Jim's little brother from the church? How about we do that first and worry about the rest? So, point of fact, um, just so we're all clear, the church is not but a few blocks from the jail which has been blown up. So It's also an active crime scene. Well, Italy... Anyway, um... I'm just putting that out there, making sure people yeah. understand. Hey, if you go back down there, um, I can't say I'll be at all kind to any of you. Yeah. Your ladyship, did, did you say um, that Winkleman had other lodgings somewhere in the city? I, I wonder if it would be worth uh, investigating where they might be, trying to ascertain their location. Perhaps that is uh, uh, where the uh, emanations of smoke and fire might be coming from. Yes. He was looking for a flat, and he wanted to be somewhere he could have sensation experiences. I think that sounds perfectly sensible. I'm not entirely sure that uh, I should uh, go back into the city for the time being. You don't say, Mr. Fraser. <laughs> well, certainly, certainly not in any uh, obvious um, capacity. The other thing that, that uh, I've been meaning to talk to you about, uh, I, it, it may be nothing, but it's somewhat puzzling, is on the cenotaph in the graveyard, there was a very strange um, carving. Uh, it looked fairly new compared to the uh, cenotaph itself, but uh, it had some very odd uh, figures in, in relief upon it. And, and I wonder um, who... Who could have put that there, and for what purpose? The the, the priest, a poor man that I spoke to at the, at the church, he was very reticent to uh, go into the matter at all. And I I get the feeling that there may be some uh, uh, well some some disagreement uh, about the uh, whether or not it's appropriate for the for them to be there. But uh, again, if if Professor Smith is pointing us towards Winkleman, I I feel that every avenue should be explored to some degree. Well, what I would suggest is that you and I, Mr. Fraser, not go anywhere we should we would be uh, readily seen. I was visiting you, therefore they know who I am. They've seen me. Probably the first on the list of suspects, so to speak. 
And you'll notice she, she's got a slight mischievous glint, just like the idea of being a, a suspect in a jailbreak case just sounds very thrilling. Uh, we can do some research. I've got the books, I've got the diary. Perhaps there's other things outside of town. Maybe look at these other caves, Mr. Fraser, but not going into town. Well, the other three can go into town. Yes, that seems like a, a, a very sensible idea, your ladyship, yes. I do have them on occasion. You do yourself a, a disservice, your ladyship. You very frequently have excellent ideas. Does that mean, then, that Mr. Fraser and Lady Elizabeth will be staying at Anton's home temporarily while the group heads back into town and tries to look for threads of connection between Winkleman and a potential apartment. Yes, I wanted to have Fraser look through the diary to see if there's any drawings or anything that match the images he saw. Mm. No, what? No, no, no drawings and image for what you saw last night. I have a feeling that you might have seen them as well because did you not go to the great? But I, I did. I got a quick glance, but I didn't really because we had everything going on with the device and and being shot at and all of that. Oh yeah. Of course, so Fraser, yeah. Fraser went and got a more detailed look, especially the newer one. So Lady E would uh, is thinking of having Fraser look at the the diary, and oh, she might have. a look for some things as well, but specifically <laughs> things for Fraser. Okay, fair um, enough. So we'll definitely be staying at least for a little bit. So Mr. Griffith and Miss um, Bellinger and the professor will head out then into the city. And so I think what what I'll do is if the aim is to attempt to find some sort of link between Winkleman and a different location or a state, I suppose tell me what potential touchstones you are looking for what what things where would you go to attempt to find out information is there some sort of office of uh, like records historical records uh not museum but library because i think we're to hit up museums mm, yes there is a library have we been to it yet <laughs> my memory is so horrible i'd be surprised if there was a library within a stone's throw that we haven't been to i would too um so yes you have been to it before, but um, you wouldn't have uh, any trouble getting in there and uh, doing a little research. We can maybe ask different questions than we asked last time. Maybe. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Um, so during this trip, then, Simon, are you going to take a, a sidetrack to get back to the church and collect a gun? Are you considering that firearm um, lost well, I think Simon would go ahead and at least case the church to see the amount of uh, police presence or if it's hopefully distracted by the explosion of their station. It's been about a week or so since the killing of that priest. And so I would say that lo- likely the church is mostly back to normal operating procedure with perhaps a, another member of the faith taking over. There are no patrols outside of it. You can see that there's a... I mean, just going into the city, all of you would notice that there's a large portion of the downtown space that's been cordoned off. Not by, by you know, police tape or anything. Obviously, there's nothing to that in the day. But that around the, the police station and the connected cell area, there are several police officers in black shirts standing around. To make sure that nothing, no, no one else tries to, uh, you know, find their way out or <laughs> worse yet, um, something collapse on someone. The papers that are in Italian the locally are abuzz with that information. Uh, there's a lot of people taking pictures. Um, you think some of them are probably tourists. <laughs> um, but, um, but you think you could probably ferret your way inside the church and collect the pistol if you were careful about it. All right, Simon will go ahead and do that uh, at some opportune moment. He's going to mention it to the professor and Maggie if they want to continue on ahead and have him meet them up or if they want to wait for him. I I think we should wait and stay together. Um, pa- ah, ah, perhaps, Maggie, um, there's a, a people are taking photographs here. I see perhaps we can do the same and blend in. Oh, that sounds like a perfectly fine idea to me. 
So, uh, Simon, what's your stealth? 71. So you're more than a professional. Um, so why don't you give me a stealth roll for heading into the church after casing it and um, collecting the pistol? 47 under 71. Okay. Yeah, you easily get to the place where you think he was talking about. You have to check four or five different planters, but you you eventually find the revolver and you're able to retrieve the revolver. I shall secrete it upon my person. That sounds dangerous. You're able to collect the revolver and head back out of the church. For you, Maggie, taking photos here is sort of well, it feels like a, a normal tourist thing to do. You can tell the black shirts don't appreciate you taking photos, but they haven't tried to stop you yet, and that's mostly because there are three or four people with cameras in different locations. There's not much they can do about it. Um, professor, for your... I suppose for what you see, um, you can see that the amount of black shirts here in the city has seemingly doubled. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. But yeah, Simon returns to the two the uh, two of you probably within ten minutes. We really have got some fantastic photographs. Um, yes. Um, hopefully you got some of the uh, the church as well. Richard's trying to kind of play it cool, like if someone's overhearing or. Well, well did you all want to head on over to someplace else? There's some marvelous architecture around here. Oh, absolutely, I, I hear the library is um splendid. Then we, we must check that out then. So the library is a, a beautiful Italian library. It's small, but it's definitely worthy. You hear that they're in the middle of building a university. That Trieste is going to have its own proper university, but it's just not done yet. Um, the librarian behind the counter and who is willing to assist you with whatever you might be interested in finding says that um, in the next couple of years they hope to be able to put the final stones in place and then open a proper university, which is uh, something the city's the children could uh, truly use. Uh, they also mentioned that, of course, they're um, just so unbelievably thankful to have a leader like Mussolini who commits to proper education. So, what are we looking for? Uh, we are looking uh, to see if there's any public records or in the history of Winkleman information on where uh, a more specific estimate of where he lived in town. Okay. What building? So it's a hard library use role to locate the clue that you're looking for. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. And you can each make your own library use role if that's what you would like. And when you do... We'll augment them just slightly um, for specific purposes. Okay. I rolled a 30 and my library use is 66. So hard success. A hard success for Maggie. Um, Professor? So Richard, 33 under 75, which is definitely a hard success. Very good. Hard one for Richard as well. That's right. Well, Simon's not much for libraries. He likes the occasional book, so he spun a 62 over 30. Yeah, uh, so we'll say this process takes about two hours. It, going through the history of Trieste and the people who lived here and the logs and all of the anecdotal information that it takes to dig up, it's an undertaking. But Maggie, you and Richard key in on sort of what looks like a travel guide, but it's from the mid-1700s. And it's a travel guide that has uh, a sketchbook that also accompanies it. So inside this travel guide, inside their pictures, obviously, I mean, photographs, there's there's sketches that have been done by hand. Uh, And it's made by a man named Nicholas Burnett. The sketchbook appears to have been made during Burnett's grand tour It ends with a few empty empty pages. But inside, he details a couple of important people in Trieste. And one of the people that he mentions is a man named Johann Winkelmann and his, his architectural talents. And he notes in the book that Winkelmann asked for a special relief to be put up 
over a specific house. It's only mentioned in passing. And the relief that he was asked uh, to put up, that he has to have put up, Burnett did a sketch of. And that sketch appears to be of a Romanized piece of art. And that Romanized piece of art is Bacchus. Ah, well, um, this house here, perhaps perhaps we should go there if Winkleman paid it some interest. Yes, I think, I think that's a good lead to follow. Simon? He's wandering around the library with books, just looking lost. Where did he go? Simon? Simon, where are you? Professor, most of these aren't an American. Ah, we are in Italy. Uh, look, Maggie's found something. It, uh, there's um, some sort of house that Winkleman was trying to get um, converted or or some sort of adornment placed on it. Pa- perhaps we should go and see. It sounds like a plan. You got your camera ready, Miss Maggie? Oh, yes, I do. Always. How big is the tour guide? Something we could sort of... S- Yes, smuggle it out. Uh, it's not very large. It's uh, maybe A5 size, give or take. Are you considering absconding with it, maybe? Wouldn't be entirely impossible, Professor, if that's what you set your eye to. Um, so did Richard overhear any of the stuff um, with regard to Lady E's dream stroke frost thing, ghost Oh, okay. Mm-mm. I didn't think so. <laughs> You've taken the information that you went to, you know, find to them, and they pointed you in direction. And the two of you spent the better part of two hours basically parsing all the books you could find on it yeah. and, and doing fairly well, but you haven't been back up to the counter yet. And I'm under the assumption that Lady Elizabeth was just having a little fun by herself. It's hard to say. You do know that she seemed well rested this morning. Did we actually hear other voices in I, I assumed that we heard other voices and more than one set of um, footsteps in the room yes so yeah uh, you would have heard different tones but uh, it would have been very hard to pick out based on the we'll say vocalizations of Lady Elizabeth during the time and it's <laughs> a strange house strange houses make strange noises I don't even want to go there all right. So um, I guess the question is to you, Professor, is are you going to attempt to abscond with this? If Richard didn't know that uh, Lady e had some sort of, you know, vision that involved this uh, Bacchus, then I don't think he'd be sufficiently motivated to, to want to, to, to take it away. So no, the lady kept her business to herself. And so you'll leave the grand tour sketchbook there. All right. Very well. Anything else before you leave the library? I don't think so. All right. You all take off, head back to the uh, house that Anton built. I have, Simon actually has one question regarding this guide that the professor called over to show him. Mm-hmm. Um, does it look useful? Does it look like it would be useful later? Does it look like it would be useful? Well... It seems, anyway, that the professor has found a very important piece of information. It seems inside of it. And he is putting it back on the shelf and has put it back on the shelf or the cart or whatever that that they've amassed as far as the books. Um, Is it useful? Quite possibly. Be hard to say. Professor, is this something we might need at another time? I don't know. I mean... Well, possibly. I, I guess we don't know what's ahead of us. So, um, yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it could be. So, if Richard is sufficiently motivated to collect this book, then, uh, well, I mean, the professor carries around a number of different things. He's got his nice little leather briefcase and um, he's got some, some um, you know, bits of parchment and uh, pens and that sort of stuff. And I don't know, such a small guidebook. I mean, surely it's not that beyond the realms of possibility that he may have popped that in his little leather briefcase whilst um, packing away his pens and paper. Well, I also I was thinking, you know, the lady might want to see it as well. All right, so here's what I'd like, just to, um, to, to be done with this. If you're going to steal the damn book, Professor, make a slide of hand roll and let's get on with it. Just creep the book in his leather briefcase. Very good. 
I'm going to play a hand of fate against you, so go ahead and reroll that tens die. You little book thief. Well, so you rolled a 20, but now have rolled a 50. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> so you go to put this into your briefcase, and you put it in, and you shut the briefcase because you're concerned because the librarian has walked just past. And um, you think you've got enough cover from, from Maggie, and you're using sort of you're using Simon's body to, to cover the rest of it, and you pull the, the briefcase up. And you have it sort of at your side. And as you step out into the open library area to walk across the main floor, you realize that the entire sketchbook, like the bottom half of it, is sticking out the side of your briefcase. And the librarian who's carrying a load of books in her arms stops just dead and looks at you. And you hear her say, are you trying to steal that? Ah, uh, excuse me? Yes, excuse you. Are you trying to steal that? She sort of looks around to tr- find a way, a place to put her armload of books. Richard looks confused. Um, I'm sorry, what? The, 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 the tour book. Oh, she hustles over to a table. And by hustle, I mean like, her movement's cut in half because she's carrying all these books. And Richard looks down. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> ah, there we go. Um, and just takes it and pops it on the table. He does look very innocent. Let's see. Why don't you make me persuade roll, Professor? Mm. Opposed. Opposed persuade roll. Yes, because she's going to roll psychology. As we all know, librarians have a lot of psychology. That's a success. No, oh, she's failed 67, so... That was 38 under 58, so... She puts the book down and she comes over and you see her... Her visage cool a little bit. She she seems to take a breath and she says, It's an honest mistake anybody could make. It's just a... It's one of our older books and... We'd like to make sure it doesn't gather legs. Oh, I quite understand. I have to confess, I'm always doing the same back in the university. Ah, oh, well, perhaps I should be a little bit more organised with my paperwork, and then this uh, this would happen less. I might, do 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 accept my apologies. Well, of course, did you find anything of interest in the book? Um, well, I mean, we're we're interested in um Winkleman. I mean, there's a, a, a some notes I took about uh, uh, some piece of architecture i believe it is that um that was constructed for him hmm oh yes um well a, a wonderful and wondrous architect himself he had many pieces built the cenotaph have you seen that um no where whereabouts is that she points out the museum cenotaph that you, that you have seen <laughs> she she gives you directions to it uh seemingly as if you're another tourist half ah, and she says um one of the more interesting places beyond the cenotaph, if you're interested in a walk down by, um, well, down by the shore, he, she looks over your shoulder and you see her eye, Miss Bellinger. If, if you and your wife would care to take a walk, um, right. there's a, a house that he had built on uh, Via Marco Polo. Oh. And it has many wonderful reliefs on it. Um... Oh, that sounds delightful, darling. We should go visit that. Oh, absolutely. We should um, grab a, a spot of lunch and um, we can go over there with your camera. Oh, I'd love to get some pictures. I, I think that would be fantastic. Well, I'm. I once again, I apologise for the, um, the, the the mix up with the guide there. And uh, yes, um, I'm. I, s- I swear, if my husband, if his head wasn't attached, he'd lose it. <laughs> um, she says something in Italian that you're not really sure what it means, but she kind of giggles a little and then turns to leave. Ah, Thank you again. All right. Uh, So back at Anton's, uh, I I guess for the, for the first few hours of the morning, uh, Mr. Fraser, you're just going over the book. You're just, yes, I'm just uh, aiding and assisting her ladyship. Yeah, uh, so as far as the book goes, as far as Winkleman's diary go, there are some connective tissue pieces you start to see. She 
if if she points out the side note that she found last night, there's something that points to more of Winkleman's story here in Trieste. And there there does seem to be some sort of mystery location in the city that you've yet undiscovered that was important to him. Do we get any kind of impression as to why it was important to him? Give me a give me a library use role because it's been translated now and it's hard success required to find it. Both of us or please make it both of us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Why not have the both of you <laughs> rack them up? Um, oh. Nope. No, that's a 49 oh. over 20 for right, my So <laughs> I got Okay. Go ahead. I got a 49 under 80, but that's still nine off a hard success. I'll play a hand of fate in your favor, Lady Elizabeth, and I'll give you that success. Ooh. Sweet. In the pages within the thing, the diary portion that's been translated, you find a story in the footnotes and in these side sections, because he was a pretty prolific note taker. And it isn't one note. It's two or three cut up along the different diary portions. But one of the things that you come across is that Winkleman may have had a mistress of some sort, perhaps a a family that people didn't know about, and that what he was trying to do was find a place they could be together and they could exist in. And you you begin to see some corollary, corollary threads in some of the dream aspect, the ghost aspect you experienced last night, where Winkleman talks about this cavorting, this experience around about the time he becomes, uh, when he's traveling, where he talks about meeting new people. There's no other mention other than that. And then later on, there's footnotes about him saying, it would be good to have a place where we could rest together. He doesn't really get into it too deep. And you being an aristocrat, start to read between the lines of some of that stuff. And having your sort of having that own experience within your own family now, you can see what he's driving at. He's trying to find a place where he can keep his secret family together and where it it isn't exposed to the rest of his life. Well, it appears uh, Herr Winkleman had a secret family. Yes, indeed it does. Hmm, it's interesting that that, that's not I wonder if he took notes from father, or rather father took notes from him. Good lord. Men. Well, it's not uncommon, is it, your ladyship, let's be honest. Hmm. It's uh, just a surprise that it's uh, not come out of the woodwork until now. He must have been very good at keeping it a secret. So I suppose we should find uh, where this was. Certainly wouldn't have been in small living space in the main part of town. Perhaps he hid uh, what we're looking for in wherever he hid his secret family. I think that's highly likely, your ladyship. Uh, I wonder if there are descendants of this family still alive today. What an intriguing thought. But where to begin? I mean, it could be anywhere. Trieste is a fairly large place. uh, And are there no clues here at all as to Roughly the, the the general area. So about this time, as they say, uh, the other investigators arrive back at Anton's house, having walked uh, back the couple of miles. How come are we in? Did you find anything? Nice to see you all in one piece. Ah, not being hauled off by the... No, um... Please? Ah, uh, it's, um... Yes, interesting out there. Um, any chance of a nice cup of tea? Aye, aye, the kettle's on. Information, Professor. Oh, right, right, right. Um, well, well, Maggie found a book and um, I tried to steal it, and unsuccessfully, unfortunately. You what? Well, I'm not really cut out for the life of crime, um, but... Um, yes. You shocked me. There was um, some reference to... Uh, um, uh, some sort of uh, piece of architecture that uh, uh, Mr. Winkleman was uh, had, had created and put on a house. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I immediately look at Fraser when Courtney says house. 
Yeah, I think there's a, there is a definite um, kind of meeting of glances there. Uh, the library. By the way, ding. Jim, uh, I got your piece. A piece? A, a, a genie piece? Uh, I hand Jim his pistol. Thank you, Simon. Much appreciated. We'll start checking it. Yep, it's a revolver. Uh, yeah, it, it seems to be in working order. There's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of potting dirt in it, but you managed to ferret that out rather quickly. I'll I'll spend some time later on cleaning it thoroughly. You, you do notice one thing, Mister Fraser. Hmm. There's a extra spent shell. The revolver's been fired. Very interesting. Come on. Well, did you happen to find the location of the second residence? during all your attempted nefarious deeds? Um, well, as it happens, um, the librarian that caught me um, uh, attempting to um, oh, bring, bring the book back for you, I, I hasten to add, um, uh, she she mentioned the location of this uh, somewhere uh, via Marco Polo, I believe that's the name of a road. Well, if we know where it is, why are we all standing around here then? I, I Did you say there was something... Particular about the architecture, Professor. Oh yes, um, uh, there, there was uh, there was some something some uh, 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 carving or, or casting. I, I'm not quite sure which that was um, uh, put up on the on Winkleman's building, and uh, the librarian said, in fact, there were, were many of these things on there. Uh, I had have brought you back a picture, but unfortunately, I'm uh, I was unable to uh, oh. uh, to re- remove the book. There are not of um, uh, kind of. Lizard creatures or something along those lines, are they? Uh, no, I, I, my, my art is, um, well, pretty much non-existent, but um, I, I don't believe they were lizard men. Lady E has already put on her coat at this point. She's very full of energy today, and so she's already put on her coat and her hat, looking around expectantly. Well, are we going or aren't we? Your, your, your ladyship, did, did, did we not decide, your ladyship, that it would not be prudent for us to go into the town? It's on the outskirts of town. It's fine. Oh, well, you don't have to come. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll come. If you're going, I'll come. Perhaps we could disguise you in some way, Mr. Fraser. Yes, yes. Um, perhaps a different hat. <laughs> but either way, the days are wasting. I have energy today. We're not going to waste it. Let's go. Got things to find, secret families to learn about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, and, and I think that that is the perfect time to win. So thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Horror on the Orient Express, uh, where in the next episode, it seems we'll investigate secret families, unknown houses, and see if the ghosts continue to cavort with us all. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>